What's up guys? Welcome back to Duster Buzz. My name is Marcos. Today we're talking about valve modifications, uh, valve back facing, DIY, performance improvements uh, to get a little bit more performance out of your valves. What I want to focus on today is specifically how do you know you're doing it right? How, how do you know you're getting gains, you're moving in the right direction versus just wasting time or you know, maybe even screwing something up. So I have a very simple method here that we're gonna go through. And then in the back end, I'm gonna show you guys the method that I'm using uh, to do the modifications. A few months ago, I did a video, went through a lot of the kind of back theory and background on, on why. So we're not gonna get into the weeds on that today, but I'll link that video at the end for anybody who wants to check that out. All right, so let's get into the test. Got a bunch of valves here. First, we got a Mylodon performance valve. It's a polished valve. We know this flow is good. Next, we got a stock uh, valve, a new one. So this is brand new stock valve. Um, then we have a bunch of valves in various state of back facing. And then we have two of the original valves, uh, stock valves. I just have not touched these at all yet. I don't have the ability to test airflow, so I was looking around at what, what do I do have, what can I check that will give me an indication of how much resistance we have here, how much flow uh, we have the potential to get, and oil is basically what I was able to come up with, and I think it works pretty well. So this is uh, gear oil, uh, tried a few different kinds of oil, but the gear oil has a, a pretty high viscosity you know it's pretty thick and it seems to show up pretty well so what we're going to do is we're going to put drips of gear oil on each one and we're going to look at how well it beads off so for this type of test it's important to have a clear winner the performance valve we know this flows well and a clear loser so this is the the stock valve we know this does not perform as well went through a number of iterations to make sure that this was going to be consistent I'm just going to put one drip and you can see it very quickly breaks the edge and so hopefully that comes in focus very quickly breaks the edge and starts flowing down and it's not a fast test it doesn't have to be a fast test it just has to be consistent so we're going to do the same on our stock valve and because of this little ridge here and it's not polished you know it's just a it's just a basic valve you know it's gonna it's gonna get hung up there and it's just never gonna flow off as well that's that's the starting position so we have a winner here oil makes it down and we have a loser oil doesn't make it down so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go across the line and I'm gonna drop one droplet. And I like my little eyedropper here because that way I know I get the right size. Now these next two valves, I've spent a, a bit of time on these already. Uh, a couple iterations of, of back and forth on the drill press. And you can see these are already, this one here is already starting to flow over. Uh, this one here getting close. So let's go ahead and just give it one minute and then we'll take a look across the line, see how they look. All right, so that was, uh, that was about a minute. So let's take a look down the line and see what we have. So first one, you know, we saw this break earlier. That's what we want. It's consistently, you know, flows over within, usually within a couple seconds, it flows over the edge. That's our clear winner. That's what we want them all to look like. Next, stock valve, still just, you know, piled up in, in the little groove there. That one's not going anywhere. We could We could wait all day, it's not going anywhere. Next, this one, you can see it trying to, to go over, but it's just not there yet. So this one, not quite ready. This next one, I've spent a bit of time on this one. Um, it did flow over. I'm gonna retest everything, make sure it's consistent, but this one, looking pretty good. Next here, needs another round. Here, looking pretty good. 
needs another round and again these haven't been touched yet and you still see a big old ridge on there and not going anywhere you know we start out with something that is not flowing at all and with enough work we get to something that uh, flows pretty well and ultimately hopefully get to something that uh that flows as well as this now realistically it's probably not going to perform as well as a true you know machine performance valve but a little bit better is uh, is good enough so why not just buy nice performance valves well i did on the exhaust this is actually one of the exhaust valves that's going to go in the duster um but the intakes just weren't available at, at the time so you know you guys know how it is right now with back shipping or back orders and some stuff just isn't available or maybe they're too expensive so you know these are 20 25 bucks sometimes i've seen some for up to 35 bucks a valve these stock ones are five bucks and if you can do a little bit of work yourself and get them to perform maybe half as well or, or maybe almost as well maybe that's good enough for you i don't know what the reason is but if you're looking at doing back facing i think it's good to have a way to calibrate are you moving in the right direction so that was basically the test that i'm using I think it works, but drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have a way that you think you could even uh, further improve on it. So this is just what I'm doing. I'm not saying this is the best way ever. It's just what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and talk about the method that I'm using to modify the valves. I wish I had a lathe or you know some other fancier equipment that, that would be uh, even better for doing this, but I have a drill press and I can make this work. All right, now the problem, why I screwed up last time that I was trying to do this, a uh, very important step, is I screwed up my seats. You do not want to mess up your seats, otherwise you're not going to get a good seal, and then uh, all kinds of hell is going to happen. The way that I'm making sure that I don't get into my seat is I'm going to hit it with some paint pen. Um, some machinist blue um, or... You know, what do they call it? Layout fluid or something? Um, that would be even better. I have paint pen. This will work just fine. Before you put your blue on, or I'm sorry, before you put your paint pen on, make sure you take some alcohol or something and clean it off. Make sure it's nice and clean. That way you get a good stick on your paint pen. There's two important reasons to do this, or two benefits that you get out of marking it. And I, I should have done this last time, and this is the reason I screwed up. So one is it gives you a guide to, as you're working, you stay the heck away from the blue. You know, you can go up to it, but don't touch the blue. So it gives you a visual as you're doing it. And then also, as you're checking, as you're working, if you do start hitting the blue you're gonna see it because you're gonna start you're gonna start taking some paint off so i tried a few different methods i tried you know dremel with a carbide both running uh spinning and just holding it steady that worked a little bit i tried uh just holding a, a file i had trouble with with the full file just getting it consistent and not tearing too much other stuff up I tried, I welded this thing together and tried rigging something up so I could actually use the, the drill press to like come up into it and be consistent. That didn't really work out so well. Um, tried a bunch of stuff and ultimately what I'm using is I'm using the side of the file uh, because I can get pretty good control, pretty small area. And then I'm using various grids of sandpaper. All right, let's do it. Um. Using a little bit of cutting fluid. Alright, so every now and again I'm going to stop it and clean it. You know, obviously do this at your own risk and do whatever you feel comfortable with. Alright, so uh, feeling this ridge and basically we're trying to take that ridge down without getting in the blue. All right, once I get enough of a ridge knocked off, I'm gonna switch over to some uh, some cloth, some sanding cloth. Cloth works better than paper, but use what you got, and I'm gonna go through a few different grits. Starting with, uh, I think this is like a 60, 
and then I'll go to uh, like a hundred and a two twenty, and I have some thousand that I'll just use to finish it up. So here's the one that we just worked on, and let's give it a little drop. It's wanting to go, and not quite there yet. You know, I'll throw it back on, hit it again, and uh, and just keep doing that until it works. So very tedious process, but. These are the valves that I have available, and I want to milk every last bit of power I can out of them. All right, guys, hopefully this video helps someone out. Um, you know, if you're doing this for the first time, uh, like me, then, you know, good luck with it. And uh, hopefully if you did find this useful or enjoyable, do me a favor and hit the like button. Um, I'm going through learning as much as I can as I rebuild my 74 Duster and my 69 next on deck, my 69 El Camino. As I learn stuff, I'm going to be making videos and sharing with you guys. So if that sounds cool to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button. All right, so hopefully the testing method helps some folks out as well. If you have a better method or some ideas on how to further improve it, make sure you leave a comment below. Also, leave me a comment if you found this helpful. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you next time.